Greetings and welcome to another Tomorrow's World webcast. It's great to have you here. My name is Wallace Smith and I want to talk about an event that in some ways is 85 years in the making. 85 years ago, we discovered what at the time we called another planet, though the definition of the word planet has changed since then. We discovered something on the far reaches of our solar system as we understood it, this tiny little place we called Pluto. 85 years later, the New Horizons spacecraft has finally arrived. Uh, we've taken pictures of Pluto with our telescopes and, and in other ways, but we actually finally got a craft there uh, to be able to take pictures relatively nearby, thousands of miles, but still relatively nearby. And so you perhaps have already seen images in the news of Pluto. Uh, we didn't make it while it was still called a planet. It's been downgraded to a minor planet status. Uh, but still, hey Pluto, it took us a while, but we're, we're glad to finally be here. How far away is Pluto? It is remarkable. If you've ever heard of the speed of light, the speed of light is, uh, well forget the numbers, it's really, really fast. The speed of light is the fastest material uh, object in the universe in terms of uh, photons and such. They travel at this amazing speed. And as fast as light is, it takes five and a half hours for light from the sun to reach Pluto. That is how far away this planet is. That's why we had to send this probe out years and years and years ago to reach this lonely, distant place. Uh, so congratulations to the New Horizons team for achieving a goal that really has spanned an amazing amount of time. It takes a lot of dedication and hard work. Now, a lot of people debate as to whether or not missions like this are really worth the time, effort, materials, and money that they actually take. I mean, if you really think about it, it's not like we're moving to Pluto anytime soon. It's not like the craft is picking something up and like a solid gold mountain or something and bringing it back. I understand the argument. I really get that. You know, a lot of people would say that money is better spent here. That money is better spent on, you know, housing the cold and feeding the hungry, uh, solving some of our own problems. You know, don't get me wrong. I really do understand those arguments and I'm entirely sympathetic to them. I, I'm not claiming I have all the answers. Some would argue that in the effort it takes to design such systems, we tend to press our technology forward. Uh, we tend to grow in terms of our knowledge base. Uh, and many of the things around us that you'll look at, the technology is often an outgrowth of the, the space industry, if you will. And I'm, I'm sympathetic to that argument too. I have to admit, I don't really care about either one. Uh, I'm not in charge necessarily of spending that money and I'm not in charge of running the missions. All I know is that I love them. We sent Spirit and Opportunity to Mars, the two probes crawling around there, and I love every minute of that. We've sent this probe to Pluto, and it just moves me. I, I'm not sure if it moves you too. Not everyone is a, is a geek in that way like I am, but it is just remarkable to see these photos from so far away. In my mind, missions like this, like the New Horizons missions, remind us of two things. Uh, one is a sentiment the Apostle Paul expressed. He expressed it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 12, where he says that at least in this life now, we know in part, meaning that we don't know everything. Missions like this remind us of how limited we are. We might think those pictures are impressive, but if we want to go there again, it's going to take another span of years. It might take another decade or so. There's only so much we know. It used to frustrate me as a child to see pictures of Jupiter and pictures of the Andromeda galaxy and recognize I want to know more. I want to know what it's like over there, what kind of planets they have. And yet, I couldn't know. I was limited. I was limited. And we as a human species are limited. We're not omnipotent. We're not omniscient. We can't do or know everything. And it's important to be reminded of those limitations from time to time. And yet at the same time, all the better if we can learn those limitations in an atmosphere that can inspire such a larger picture. In that particular passage I just mentioned from the Apostle Paul, he said that now we know in part, but he says there's a time coming, he says, when I will know just as I am known. That is the same thoroughness with which God knows me and he knows every fiber and every cell and every atom, every thought, every word, every breath, every blink. The same degree to which I am known, he says, I'm going to know then too. 
And missions like this, I think, also remind us of thoughts like that. They remind us that we may seem small on this planet, but it is a beautiful, big universe out there. They ennoble us sometimes, in my opinion, and open up our minds to a broader, bigger world. And we need a reminder of that. Uh, The Bible does tell us in Ecclesiastes that God has put eternity in our hearts. God has put a longing in us for something great and something noble and something huge and something powerful. And at least for me, missions like the New Horizons mission remind me of that eternity-sized hole in me. And we need to be reminded because there's only one thing in this whole universe that can fill that hole, and that is the great Creator God. They remind us that we have a larger purpose for us. While our work is here right now, our lives are here, our growth is here, our purpose and our destiny starts here but grows to go someplace else. And if we embrace that God, the only one in the universe that truly does fit that eternity-sized hole, uh, we'll find a purpose and a meaning to our life that gives... uh, a definition and a meaning to the words new horizons that no space mission is ever going to fulfill. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the webcast and I hope you'll tune into the rest of them. Please do check us out at tomorrowsworld.org and at our homes on Facebook and Twitter.